Now we're totally heading into the home stretch. I want to show you just a few more things and then we're ready to get going on to the next part. So uh, we haven't talked about nasalis yet. Remember that muscle sort of sits on the bridge of the nose and it sort of sits like a saddle on the bridge of the nose. Well, um, the one thing about it is that the LLSAN is also very prominent in that area. It runs down just beside the nose. So it's very critical that I want you to stay on the nose itself. Don't be going off to the side of the nose onto the face. Stay right on the nose, which I'm showing you in this picture here. There are the lines on the nose and I want your injection to go right in that X. So here is my nose and there's no X there, but I think you can figure it out. You want to get her to do that and then inject directly into the, the lines themselves right on the nose. Now the next shot is after Botox um, and there's a huge difference between before and after Botox. And then I'm always playing around with stuff like this. And so this is a picture of my nose with Botox on one side and not on the other which was really fun for a while because people would ask me, well, what does Botox do? And all I had to do was scrunch up my nose. Now, interestingly, you usually need a lot of units in order to do this. And I find that I need at least seven or eight units on each side of my nasalis to do the job. Um, some people can get by with five, but uh, I'm finding most people need about seven. Next, I want to talk to you a little bit about lips. This lady, for instance, has some small lips that are made worse by the fact that she's a smoker. So she has vertical lip lines. And what I like to do is divide the lip into thirds. And the dotted line in the middle there extending up is the philtrum. And then it, if I draw a line from there to the corner of the mouth, and that's where the arrow is, that whole section. I've divided now into thirds and the X's mark the first third and the second third. So my shots go about two millimeters above the vermilion border and just barely subcutaneously. Normally it's one or two units. So in that lady that I just showed you, I probably just put one unit in each of those X's. So I put one, two on the right and one, two on the left. Now this lady has stronger lips and so she could tolerate two, two on the right side and two, two on the left. So then I question for myself well how are we going to figure this out and so I tried it on myself and this is both of these photos that I'm about to show you are after Botox I did 2-2 two, two on the right and 1-1 one, one on the anatomical left and you can see the right is a whole lot flatter but it really didn't function properly and I have to communicate for a living and this was not acceptable yes it looked better theoretically but I couldn't live like that <laughs> A um, couple of things I wanted to point out to you. One was uh, mentalis. Now mentalis is that little muscle just in the center of the chin that makes people get that apple dumpling looking chin. And there are often two muscle bellies, but sometimes just one. If the face is narrow, then I would put just five units right in the center. And that's a deep IM shot. If, it's, um, if there's clearly a wide mentalis, then it's okay to go with 3-3 three, three, or even 4-4. Four, four. So let's take an example of this lady who's not looking very happy right now. She's showing us her DAO. That DAO is so strong, I'd probably put 7-7 seven, seven on each side, but I would not inject her mentalis on the same day, right? Because we don't want to get that muscle that sits in between mentalis and DAO. This is a great example of that. When she comes back after having her DAO done two weeks later, then I would consider putting 3-3 three, three into her mentalis. And this one I just want to show you out of interest. It's considered an advanced technique, but this lady has a platysmal band and it extends all the way up towards her neck. There's also a, a technique called Nefertiti that creates a more strong jawline, more smooth jawline. Oh, and one other thing I meant to mention about lips is that you can go to half a day of lecture on lips. You could go to a full day of lectures on lips. Um, many practitioners really manipulate lips with Botox. I tend not to do that. It is considered a highly advanced technique. I just wanted to give you something to get going started with on lips. So that's it and now we're going to be ready to move on to some other issues.